So today I will be working with this cube-like wall shelf. I know these come in many different sizes and I'm sure you have seen these before. Now for the focal point I want to use this little plastic torso. I found it well in one of my places where I rummage for goodies. I also found this uh, little frame which belongs in a dollhouse. So I will add some texture paste to the middle but I will preserve the edges because they're nicely decorated. And this will anchor my little figurine here and will give it some stability. So this can dry and in the meantime I will fill in the holes which I have in the back of this little shelf. For that I use some of the little bit hardened texture paste which I can always find at the rim of my container and that will help me to get a somewhat even surface. And then I use my nice soft texture paste and I create some stencil designs using these gear stencils and I do it all over, outside, inside, on the sides. And from here on, actually, all my steps are going to be very easy to follow. Like so often, I will turn you over to some music. Now, all the mediums I will be using or anything I might have to explain will be in the captions. And I will talk to you towards the end because I have a second piece I want to show you as well. So please hang around, enjoy watching me put this together, and i talk to you in just a wee bit.
So here's my completed piece and as you can see it turns really nicely so let me give you a bit of a close-up first here on the outside all that yummy texture and some of the detailing now I really enjoyed working with this plaster bandage. I never used it before and I think it gives such nice uh, dimensional texture. So I definitely want to use it again. Now you have to hurry up a little bit. You have about three minutes before it hardens. So here is the inside of it. There's my little, um, well it's not really a figurine. What is it? It's a torso, right? And I think the plaster really gave it some movement and also secured it very well into its little box here. So there's the writing on the wall, be strong. And I think even though the poor lady has no arms or legs or head, she has personality. She has that strong uh, vibe coming off her. So I'm quite happy with the way it came out. And yes, I did not uh, color the inside too much because I didn't want to take away from the focal point. But I think it uh, shows all the texture really well. Now here on the outside I covered up a lot of the stenciling I did uh, to start with but I'm good with that because well to me it looked a little generic anyway and I'm okay with just having bits and pieces uh, come out. It definitely textures nicely the front, the back and of course the little stand got a little bit of it too and I'm also happy with the color combination. So. Yeah, so here's this one. And yes, of course, I have a second piece to show you. So let's see. I had a second one of these little square uh, wall shelves. This one is a little bigger, as you can see, but it has the same mechanism on the bottom, so it turns same way. It's bigger, of course. And let me show you first what I did on the outside. So here I textured with some metal mesh. I had some doily pieces on it. There's some corrugated cardboard. I had some of my gesso with my sawdust on it. And then I added round elements. Some are broken jewelry pieces, some are buttons, some are cabochons. And I just added them in a way that this line continues. It goes to the inside, it comes back out, it goes around, goes around this way. And then the bottom has the same texture, as you can see. And then here on the top I colored it with brown and orange rusty paste. And then just the elements got a bit of a blue touch. So that brings me to the inside. Ta-da! So this is a little bit difficult to show you because of course this little bottle hangs straight. But I think you can get the idea. So on the inside I added blue, light blue paint, but then I distressed it again with my rusty paste. As you can see the the lines of the round elements keeps going here on the top there and on this side. I also made a little circle here on the on the bottom and then I added four hooks in the four corners and I added this a small mason jar. It actually says mason jar patented 1858 on it. Uh, if you can see it. And to in order for it to hang I had to kind of construct this ring underneath the top. It's just a circle made out of wire with four little hooks so I was able to attach um, the chains and that was very fiddly. The whole thing was very fiddly. Trying to get it to hang in the center not too high not too low took me a while. And then here on the inside it has some rolls of paper like vintage maps and paper. It has um, a tiny little, let me see from the other side here, whoops, you can see it maybe better, yeah, there we go. It has a tiny pencil in it and a couple of the rolls have a little charm, one with stones and one is a tiny little metal bottle. I don't know if you can pick it up through the glass. Anyway, it's there and this glass of course was a salt shaker, you can see the top, but a very old one. So. I don't think it's as old as 1858. I think that's just the advertisement, but it's old. So here it is. It's hanging freely in there. Oh yeah, and here on the bottom I gave it little feet. These are pennies. And here on the other one, as you saw me do, I put these cabochons and I left them in the original colors because it matched the top. 
So here are my two newest assemblages. I really enjoyed working with the movement and being able to see it from two different sides, which of course makes you pick things which are attractive from both sides. So um, yeah, it was a challenge, but I really enjoyed it. I hope you liked my video and had fun watching me put this together. I see you really soon again, latest by next Friday. You be safe. See you then. Bye bye for now.